Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Glory be to God. Something about that clap. I just got rejuvenated. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. We bring greetings on behalf of Faith Outreach Deliverance Church. Christ is our Lord and Savior, giving honor unto our apostle. And we thank God for him just being here. Praise the Lord, honoring our pastor. Praise the Lord and everyone in your respected places. Excited about the word of God in the name of Jesus. Excited, excited, excited. Praise the Lord about what we're going to share on tonight. We're going to talk about applying the principles of the word. Praise the Lord. But before we touch any portion of the word of God, we're going to have prayer followed by the scriptures for every day and the seven works of grace. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you and we magnify your name. We glorify you, Father God, because you are worthy and there is none other like you. We thank you, Lord God, for just allowing us to come together to be in your presence, drawing us by the Holy Spirit. We thank you in advance that you have opened up our spiritual ears and our eyes, that we may apply your word, Father God, that we may stand on your word, Father God. Your word clears our mind, Lord God. Your word purifies us, Father God, and the Holy Spirit instructs us in the word. We are excited, Lord God. We thank you for grace and favor from the word alone only. We thank you for the power of the word in the name of Jesus. I speak healing that's going to take place through the word of God, renewal through the word of God on tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you for clarification on tonight. Lord God, rejuvenation, Lord God, through the word of God, I just magnify your name. Oh God, I just thank you for everyone who is going to be in attendance on tonight, that they will come looking, Lord God, for a word, looking for understanding, looking for counsel, looking for knowledge and wisdom. Oh God, I just thank you. I magnify your name, Father God, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I thank God. We come for a purpose. Oh, God, I thank you. Scriptures for every day. Wisdom and knowledge belongs to you. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 17 through verse 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isaiah 11 and 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Be filled with God's fullness, Ephesians 3, 17 through 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians the second chapter verse 8 through verse 10 Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead body, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Acts 1 and 8, 
but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Expect a move of God suddenly. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, natural earthly bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Please note, this is talking about your body that you have now, not the one you're going to receive one day in heaven. Allow the Lord to impart his life into you by placing faith in his word. Begin to praise him for this promise. Seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Repentance, atonement, sorrow. Conversion, transform, changed. Justification, validation, legalization. Sanctification, consecration, purification. Baptism of the Holy Spirit beginning. Redemption, liberation, deliverance, freedom. Perfection, excellence, faultlessness. Amen. Amen. All right, so tonight... Because there is so much going on upon the earth. And it is important that we get to a place in our lives as believers in Christ Jesus that we stand firmly on the word. That is what we have. And for the past two weeks... We've been talking about recognizing the bait. And the bait that we begin to talk about was the bait of Satan. How he comes in to bait us to disagree with what God said and to get us to disobey what God has said for us to do. And I want to take that a step further because on Sunday morning, as I was getting dressed, I heard this portion of the scripture text over in Malachi, the third chapter and the 11th verse. Now we're going to tie this in with several scriptures. I know that Malachi, the third chapter, is talking about tithes and offering. But we're going to look at this particular principle and apply it to the mere fact that we have to find ourselves in a place of being obedient to what God said. If we are expecting God to uphold his promises, which his word will never return unto him void, his word that he sent out, it will accomplish what he sent it out to do. But everyone who is a believer and who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, believed in their heart, confessed with their mouths by faith, and begin to move in an area of obedience to the commandments of God, we should be able to find ourselves in the word when the bait comes, when trials and tribulations come, when we feel like we want to give up and throw in the towel, when we feel like our backs are up against the wall, if we can find ourselves where we have been obedient to what God said, we can apply this word. Now over in Malachi, the third chapter and the 11th verse, it says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Now the most important thing that got my attention is I heard the word was, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So I said, I, I opened up my Bible and I was getting dressed to come to Sunday morning service, but I went to that word and I opened it up and I said, God, what are you saying to me? Because I need you to do this for me, but I need to make sure that I can apply this word to my life. And that's what we all have to do. It does us no good to quote scripture if we're not being obedient 
to what it says. We are to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the work of the word. And so there are some things that, that we have to do. Now, let's back up to verse 10, because I want to touch this area first, and then we're going to move to some other areas. Verse 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now many want to grab hold of the bottom portion of that scripture. But there are instructions at the beginning. And the instru instructions of tithe and offering did not start here. As a matter of fact, it started in the time of Abraham. Even when it came in the law, under the law with Moses, the people were encouraged they were instructed to return back to God. So this right here just hit me today, which is so good. And I, I want to take my time and say it. Under the law, when it was instructed, and this even went for Abraham. When God instructed them to give their tenth, it was beyond money. The earth was instructed to give God a tenth. And so... For us, how do we apply that to ourselves? God has already blessed us with gifts and talents, right? We are to take what he blessed us with and give him a tenth of it. So even if you don't have any money, you can take the gifts and talents that you have and apply it as a tenth to fulfill the word of God. And I know many people, um, I've heard over the years, many people say, oh, that was under the law. No, it was not. Mm -hmm. Tithe occurred in the time of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But it applies to every area of our life. Yeah. Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, mm -hmm. can be applied when we are obedient to the commandments of God. Now, I looked up the word rebuke and devour. The word rebuke means restrain, warn, and disapprove. Devour means to consume and destroy. So what God is saying to us, if you would obey to my voice, to the commandments that I say to you, I will restrain the enemy from destroying what you have. Yeah. I will disapprove of him wanting to come mm -hmm. and stagnate what you got. I will warn him, touch not my anointed and cause my prophet no harm. Mm -hmm. But I must find myself in compliance with the word of God. Yeah. So compliance means that I am going to obey, adhere to, I'm going to follow the word of God. So let's read that again. As a matter of fact, I want someone, I, I want you to read that. Malachi 3 and 11. Can I get someone to read that? And I want, I want you to let that resonate in your spirit. And I want you to read it loud and clear because we're going to apply this principle tonight. Can I get somebody to read that? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. So now I'm going to go over to John 15 and 7. John 15 and 7 says, we're going to apply Malachi 3 and 11, okay? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. The only way, the only way possible, I can apply the principle of the word of God, I have to do what John 
15 and 7 says. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I can back up all the way at the first verse. Mm -hmm. I must abide in the word and the word must abide in me. I must find myself in compliance and in obedience with the word of God. Okay, John 14, 15. We're going to plot his word. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Which means when I give you some instructions by the Holy Spirit, if you keep it, if you keep it, I got something for you. What does he say? And I will pray the Father. He, he's going to pray for you. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. I'm applying that word. I'm applying the word. That's how we're going to survive. That's how we get our strength. That's how we get the release of God's promises in our lives. We can quote it all day long. But if I am not compliant, if I'm not obedient, I have no right to it. I have no expectation. I can't say, well, God, you said, and let me go back to Malachi 3 and 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Now, if something is going on, I need to do a self-examination. I need to go down to what God said to angel, okay? Do I believe by faith? Let's, we got to go back to the basics. Do I believe by faith that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life? Do I believe that? Do I believe that in my heart and do I confess it with my mouth yes. that God raised him from the dead? Mm -hmm. Do I really believe that by faith? Okay, I believe that. I have to go a little further. I, I, I must abide by the word, okay? So I believe it, now I got to abide in it. I have to spend some time in prayer. He teaches us how to pray. He tells us, first seek ye the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And all these things that we worried about, they'll be added unto me. But that's applying another principle. Mm -hmm. That's applying the principle of the word of God. He tells us what to do first. And when we do that, mm -hmm. we can have an expectation that he is going to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, if I am not in compliance, if I'm cutting corners... Mm -hmm. If I'm in and out, I can't hold God to the fire. Amen. Mm -mm. I can't get angry with the God who has changed not. He never, his word didn't return unto him void. He said over in Isaiah 55, my word will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I sent it to if you apply the principles of my word. But you must apply the principles of my word first. Let's take a look at some command, at some instructions. Let's go over to Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. Oh, wait, well, you know what? Let's go to 10, and then I'm going to go over to 11. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10. And I'm going to start at the 12th verse. As we apply the word of God. And I'm going to tell you that when we find ourselves in the word, check and balance. And when you find an area... And the Holy Spirit will reveal it. Slowfulness, disobedience, repent. 
and turn from it. Because in this season, we want to see the miraculous hand of God like never before. And God is ready to release many a blessings, many a promises, healings, miracles. He is ready, but many are not in compliance. And that's how the enemy come in with frustration and doubt. But remember, we have to apply the word of God because the enemy wants to bait you to thinking that God will not uphold his word. He will uphold his word. Deuteronomy 10, beginning at the 12th verse, it says, Now, Israel, what do of the Lord thy God require of thee? That becomes personal. That becomes personal. So then we can put ourselves, put your name in there. And now, angel, what do of the Lord thy God require of thee? God, what do you require of me as a servant, as a ambassador of Christ, as one of a royal priesthood of a holy nation? What do you require of me? It is more than, okay, I got the basics of faith to believe for salvation. I have that. But you also tell me I have to add to that, that I cannot become just a doer or a hearer, I have to be both. Mm -hmm. I got to hear the word, then I got to do the work. I got to do the work, I got to hear the word. I, I, I have to stay in compliance. Mm -hmm. So it says, and, and now Israel, what do of the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God? That's one. Mm -hmm. To walk in all his ways, that's two. And to love him, that's three. Mm -hmm. And to serve the Lord thy God, that's four, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. Number five, to keep the commandments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Number six, and his statutes, mm -hmm. which I command thee this day. And listen, it's for your good. Mm -hmm. It's for my good. So if we were to break down that scripture, that is six things that we are obligated to do. And we still have to look at the Ten Commandments. Amen. Remember when Jesus said to his disciples, it is expedient that I go. Yeah. It's necessary. Mm -hmm. I have much more to say to you, but you can't bear it now. Which means I got more instructions for you. I have more directions for you. I have more counsel for you that my father which is in heaven's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. I got more for you to do. Because it's generations to come. And if you obey my voice, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit, but see, he's only going to reveal what he hears from heaven. Amen. He is only going to reveal the heart of God Amen. for us. And when I find myself obedient, when I go when he tells me to go, when I pray when he tells me to pray, when I minister when he tells me to minister, when I give those words and those hugs and lay those hands when he tells me to do, when the enemy come in like a flood, you see how we lining up the principles of God? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And it goes back to Malachi 3 and 11. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Why? Because I was obedient to what he told me to do. I was obedient. So I can stand on that word. I can, I can go back and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said you rebuked the devour for my sake. I followed your commandments. Let's read, let's read that again. Deuteronomy 10 and 12 through 13. This is good. It says, and now, I put myself in the word. And now Israel, what do of the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways. How do I walk in his ways? By allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me. As long as I follow the Holy Spirit, I am following righteousness. 
I am following in all the ways of God. When I get out of line, he's going to correct me, rebuke me, chastise me, reprove me. I got to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Verse 14 says, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God in the earth also with all that there is in. Only the Lord had to delight in thy father. So the promise that he made to Israel started with Abraham. If we if we go if we go even further, it it really went to Noah. The promise. It was all about following the commandments, following the instructions. That's what it's all about. Isn't it, and it's for the furtherance for the kingdom. Yes, Malachi 3 and 10 is talking about tithe, and it is for the kingdom, for the upkeep of the of the God's house, of the Lord's house, for the furtherance, for the work, to, to assist with ministers and pastors and missionaries who have to go and for the upkeep of the sanctuary. It was never designed to go in anybody's pocket. That's where many fell off. Because they didn't see anything going on in the sanctuary in the upkeep. They saw one individual pocketing the money and everybody else was destitute, in need. They weren't getting properly fed. And so that's where that stigmatism came. And, and listen, this happened. If we look at books for the history of Christianity in the church, it happened a long, listen, before we were thought of. It happened a long time ago, but God's word did not change. Amen. It's still needed today. Amen. We still have to apply the word of God to our lives today. And if, he, listen, whatever he tells you to do, this is why we have to seek our own soul salvation. This is why it is so important that we develop our own relationship with Christ. Amen. Because I can't bank off of my mom and dad's relationship. I have to have my own. Because what he instructed them to do besides this right here, it ain't going to apply to me. So I can't take your instructions and apply it to my life and think I'm standing on the word of God. That's what he told them to do besides this. He might have given them something specific. I can't say, oh, I'm going to do that and think I'm in compliance because those were not my instructions. I have to wait to see what he's going to say to me. We got to wait to see. Wait to see what he going to say to me. So we have those principles. Then when we go over to chapter 11 in Deuteronomy. Verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments. Not sometime. Not part of the time, not when we feel like it, not when it feel good, not when we want to justify it, not, not on those times, but always. Always. I can't pick it up today and lay it down tomorrow. It is always. I can't decide that, you know what, on certain days of the week, I'm going to follow the will and the commandments of God. Only on those days, I'm going to say, what is it that you require of me? But every single day, I must say, what it is that you require of me this day? I have the foundation. I have it. But is there anything else you require of me today? Because I want to find myself in your word. I, don't, I want to be able to go. I want to be able to pull that word. That's a promise. Malachi 3 and 11 is a promise. You say you will rebuke the devourer. Once again, rebuke means restrain. It means to warn. To disapprove. Take your hand off her finances. Take your hands off of her body. Take your hands off of her children. Take your hands off of her job. Take your hands off of it. Why? 
Because she was compliant. Because she did what I told her to do. She didn't feel like it. But she said, yes, Lord. Your will and not my will be done. Yes, Lord, I submit myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. So I can go look at the word and I say, oh, 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 you're going to rebuke the devour for my sake? For my sake? For little old me? Yes. Because I'm applying the word and I'm doing what he said. Mm -hmm. And when I get an error, God, forgive me. Yes. Forgive me. Yep. I, I want us to get to that word. That's, that's a powerful word there. Amen. That's a powerful principle. Verse 2, it says, And know you this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles, and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. So, so somebody might say, well, he talking to Israel and when they were delivered out of Egypt, how do I apply that to myself today? Look back over your life mm -hmm. and how he has kept you, yeah. how he has delivered you, yeah. how you might have been at the jaws of death and he snatched mm -hmm. you out, oh, yeah. how he snatched you out of chaos and sin just in the nick of time. Mm -hmm. Somebody might have been on their way to prison, but he sent an interception. Just in the nick of time. Thank Hallelujah. Just in the nick of time. Yes. You experience that. You know that some things that we might have done in our lives, and, and if we think about it, we're like, Ooh, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. if it had not been for your grace, if it had not been for your mercy, you knew what time to come and snatch me out. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that in the day that I heard your voice, I heart not my heart. I can apply that principle. That's a principle. In the day that you hear my voice, heart not your heart. So guess what? Because I didn't harden my heart and I found myself in compliance, I can go to Malachi 3 and 11. And so you said you'll rebuke the devourer for my sake. Because I heard your voice mm -hmm. and I accepted it mm -hmm. and I moved according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. I got in a hurry about that thing. I wasn't slowful. Mm -hmm. I didn't neglect it. I didn't ignore you. Mm -hmm. And I tried my best not to do it my way. Yes. I can reach for that word. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Here's the most beautiful thing. When you can find yourself in the word, you can rest easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When stress is trying to come on you and you know you did what God told you to do and you are obedient and you go back to the word. I know the Holy Spirit gave me that word Sunday morning. Guess what? I was able to, listen, you talking about rest and I can tell stress you can't come over here. I can tell frustration. No, not today. Because I applied by the principle. Hallelujah. And all I got to do is say thank you Lord. And wait for the manifestation. And wait. But we got to find ourselves. In the word. So that we can say. Lord you said. Mm -hmm. Remind him of his word. But once again. If I'm not in compliance, I can't be telling God what they said, what he said. Because guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to be right there to remind us what he commanded us to do, what he instructed us to do. And we didn't do it. But we have an opportunity to repent and turn from it. And get in line yes. 
with the will of God. Now, the thing about this is we can't rush God. But he said, I'll rebuke the devourer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll rebuke him. Once again, listen, he will warn the enemy about you. You are precious in God's eyesight. You ever hear that term, you know, my husband don't play about me. I don't play about my children. God don't play about his children. God, listen, he, he sent the warning. Touch not my anointed and cause my prophet no harm. I have sent the angel of the Lord before you to prepare the way. And if you would obey his voice, all those enemies that are around, around about you, they shall not come by thy dwelling. Mm -mm. Let me go, let, let me just go back over to Malachi 3 and 11 because I want to read this. He said, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. He can't destroy the fruit of your ground. Not when you are following the Holy Spirit. And releasing the fruit of the spirit. He can't destroy that. He can't destroy that. So when he says. Hold your peace. I'll, 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 I'll fight your battle. Mm -hmm. That's the commandment. Yeah. Those are instructions. Mm -hmm. And when you do that. Mm -hmm. I don't care how. The noise. Begins to roar. And the earthquake begins to shake all around you. Mm. You hold your peace. Mm. The Lord is going to fight your battle, which means he, he, he given you his word of Malachi 3 and 11. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Devour means to consume or destroy. Mm -hmm. But God said, my father, which is in heaven, said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he will not be able to destroy the fruit of your ground. Why? Because I take a tenth of what he gave me. My worship, my praise, the gifts and talents that he gave me. I give him that, I give that back to him. When I do it. When I'm creating words of encouragement, of inspiration, I'm giving that back to God. He gave it to me, I give it to him. If I'm creating something for somebody and I say no charge, that's my tithe. Mm -hmm. I give tithe all day. I sow a seed all day. When he give me his word, I sow it back out. When he blesses me with finances, I do that too. Remember I just said last week that he'll give seed to the sower? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it's not always money. Amen. During those times, they didn't, have, they didn't have money. They had crops. They had cattle. The earth was supposed to give God back a tenth of what he gave the yeah. earth yes. and so if you planted a harvest mm -hmm. you planted a seed when it harvested mm -hmm. guess what you take a tenth of it mm -hmm. you it, listen you took it to the priests mm -hmm. if we read our word mm -hmm. guess what mm -hmm. the priest when they took it to the priest mm -hmm. they had to tithe off of that mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, help us holy ghost Help us, help us, help us, Holy Ghost, help us, Holy Ghost. My God, my God. Let's go back over to Deuteronomy 11. Are you getting something out of this tonight? We are applying the word of God for our lives. Because I want you to succeed. I want us all to grow in spiritual maturity. Don't you get tired of the enemy? Now, he ain't going to let up. He ain't going to let up. Scripture says that he, he's seeking to and fro. Mm -hmm. Constantly, 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 constantly. Mm -hmm. Seeking whom he can devour. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I can find myself in the word, mm -hmm. I can be like one of those men yes. over in Job 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. They went to present themselves to the Lord, and there was Satan. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. God said, what, what you doing here? 
What you doing here? He looking to see who he can devour. God had to give him permission to touch Job. Same thing applies with us today. But Job was compliant. Mm -hmm. And if we pay attention to scripture, it was noted what he can touch. Mm -hmm. He couldn't just go in there and touch anything. He had to get permission. And then guess what? He came back. But each time, Job was compliant. As we go further in Deuteronomy 11, God begins to instruct the people how to take care of this promise. Verse 8 says, Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye, listen, ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, rather ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed a land that floweth with milk and honey. So what is God saying? I'm not sending you in this promise for temporary. I don't want you to lose it. I may allow you to expand and grow, but I don't want you to lose it. And I want you to keep it. Now, you may pass it on as an inheritance. Thank you, Lord God. You might move to bigger and better, but it's not because you lost it. Mm -mm. No. I want you to keep it. I want you to be the deciding factor. It's time for me to move because God says it's time for you to go to greater and bigger things. So guess what? Prepare to move to greater, but not because you lost it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. He forewarned them before they even got there. Don't get in there and forget me. Don't get in there and forget what I told you to do. Don't get in there and forget that I am the Lord your God. Don't get in there and serve other gods. Don't get in there and forget my commandments, my statutes, and my judgments. Don't get in there and act like them other people. Get in there. I didn't send you to go in there and act like them. I sent you in there to be a standard. I sent you in there. So that they can see what a tr real, true, and living God will do for his people. Mm -hmm. If they abide in me and I abide in them. Listen, that is the standard. I didn't get in. I ain't tell you to go over there and get comfortable and get compliant. As a matter of fact, when they went back into exile again, he told them to make peace in the land. Listen, I know you over there in captivity and you in another struggle because you were disobedient. But what I want you to do is I want you to yet plant. I want you to yet multiply. Because when I bring you out of here, you ain't coming out empty handed. You will not lose a thing. But that is only for the raiment. Who are obedient. That is only the word for those who will find themselves in compliance with the word of God. Yes. That's the only thing, that, that's the only way it ain't applied to nobody else. I can have a mouthful of scripture and be disobedient. And I can say all day long till I'm blue in the face. I'm standing on the word of God. Um, did you fear the Lord that God? Did you walk in all his ways? Did you love him? And to serve the Lord that God with all that heart and with all that soul? Did you keep his commandments? Did you keep his statutes? Hallelujah. Did you do that? Did you do that? I don't know what God wants from me. Did you ask? Ask, seek, and knock. Uh huh. God, what you require of me? What is it that you require of me? Because I want your word. I want your word to live in me. The word is there. We accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, which is the word. He's there. He's abiding. He's there. Well, we got to abide in him. Mm -hmm. 
We got to get in him. Mm -hmm. Get in him and be obedient. Get in him. So, so when you're facing trial and tribulation, you can go back and say, oh, no, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus and the spirit that is sent to attack me and whatever it may be. Because I found myself doing what the word of God said. And God, you said you will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Now, oh, God, this is so good. I know we're going to have to do a part two. I'm trying not to preach it. But let's go to Zechariah 3 and 2. Zechariah 3 and 2. He is rebuking the devourer. For your sake. Now. Here it says. Oh this is good. I'm going to read the second verse first. And then I'm going to go back to the first. It says. And the Lord said unto Satan. The Lord rebuke thee. O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand pluck it out of the fire? Yes. On your behalf. The Lord will rebuke Satan. He said it over in Malachi 3 and 11. He's saying it over here in Zechariah 3. I will rebuke. The devourer for your sake. Do it for me, God. Do it for me, God. Oh, God, I know you can do it for me. I stand in the gap. Do it for me. When you're interceding for your children, prayers of the righteous availeth much. Do it for me. Rebuke that spirit off of my children. Rebuke it from off of my loved ones, my siblings. Rebuke it. That spirit that attached generations back. Rebuke it. Do it for me. You can do it for me. Why? Because I was compliant with your word. Now, when I look at Zechariah, beginning at the, the, the third chapter in the first verse, it says, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. Listen, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. So that lets me know. He ain't just attacking the lay members. It say the high priest. Let me read that again. And he showed me Joshua. This is Zechariah the prophet. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. Listen, standing before the angel of the Lord. That means he was in prayer. He went into the presence of the Lord. And so was Satan standing at his, listen, at his right hand to resist him. To remind him and to bring him all kind of thoughts of what's not going right. And, and this one is against you. And that one is against you. And you sure God called you. And, and, and th th listen, to resist him. Mm -hmm. To try to bring him out of prayer. Yeah. To try to get him to doubt what God said. Mm -hmm. To disagree what God told him to do. Mm -hmm. To remind him of his sin. Yeah. Of his iniquities. Mm -hmm. Of his trespasses. Against God. That's what Satan does. He baits us. But if we don't know the word to say. Behold in him. I am a new creature. All things are passed away. Verse 2 says. And the Lord said unto Satan. The Lord rebuke thee. Let me go back to rebuke. Rebuke means to restrain, warn, and disapprove. At this time, he was warning him. Stand down. Stand down. You know God will do that for you. He will rebuke the enemy. He will rebuke Satan for you. Tell Satan to stand down. When Satan is hovering over you to try to cause you death, 
my God will say, stand out. I rebuke you. You can't have his life. It's not his time yet. It's not her time yet. Stand down. I got work for them to do. Take your hands off of their finances. Stop agitating trouble with their children, trying to get them to refocus on the trouble over there. I need them focus over there. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. But you got to find yourself in compliance mm -hmm. of obedience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 says, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments mm -hmm. and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. Now in the New Testament, as I just quoted, old things are passed away. So take away. Take away the stain from yesterday, the stench of sin, because we are cleansed by the word of God. So now you've gone from a stench of sin to a sweet aroma of Christ, which is the anointing that destroys the yoke. He said, take away the filthy garments from him and unto him. He said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua. Let me tell you something. This is a principle I'm about to read to you. Oh God, thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. I don't want you to miss that. If thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, what are you talking about charge? What is ta a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. My charge is I charge you to serve. I charge you to teach. I tar charge you to minister. I charge you to prophesy. I charge you to lay hands. I charge you to walk in spirit of authority. I charge you for the sake of the kingdom. I charge you. Oh, if you keep his charge. Keep it. Hallelujah. Keep his charge. So you can find yourself mm -hmm. being able to grab hold of the word. Mm -hmm. Oh, I kept your charge. Yes. I kept your charge. Mm -hmm. Let me read verse 7 again. Thus said the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, mm -hmm. and if thou will keep my charge, mm -hmm. then shalt thou also judge my house. Mm -hmm. Your gifts will make room for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't even get to Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> we didn't even get there with those instructions. He says, and I, you, you shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. Uh oh, wait a minute. He ain't just talking to the high priest. He ain't just talking to the shepherds. He's talking to the lay members. He's talking to those who he has sent for that shepherd to lead and to guide, to help mold and to shape into discipleship so that they can go on and fulfill their call for the kingdom of heaven. So it's not just applied to the shepherds. It's applied to all who would believe in Christ Jesus. Mm. The principles of the word. If we want to see, if we want to see the hand of God move, we must put ourselves in compliance with the word of God. Amen. It's there. It is literally there. 
It's like it's, it's right there mm -hmm. and many are trying to figure out how to get to it. Mm -hmm. They're doing all kind of things to get to it. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, all you got to do is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. All you got to do is obey my voice, my yes. commandments. All you got to do is walk before me. Mm. All you got to do, and listen, all those other things that we're doing to trying to get to the release of the promises of God, we ain't got to do all of that. He's telling us, I'm giving you the principles. I'm giving you my law. I'm telling you what it is to do to get me to release my word. And he said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. That he must believe that I am a rewarder. That's the principle. I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. That's the principle. I'm standing on the principles of God. Mm -hmm. I'm standing on it. Yes. I'm firm on it. Yes. So you. that when I go in prayer, I can go boldly to the throne of grace. Yes, Lord. I can go boldly that when I pray, I believe. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to hesitate. I ain't got to cough and choke. I ain't got to, oh, how can I make this pretty? No, 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 no. I'm standing on the principles. I'm standing. I'm standing firm. And as we grow up in him, remember last week I gave you the example of the fawn's legs. They shaky at first, but they get some strength under them, and they learn how to hold up the body. They learn how to move. And then, listen, they walk a little shaky at first. Mm -hmm. Then they begin to walk with clarity. Yes. Amen. And oh, at a point in time, they can run <laughs> and not be weary. Because I got the principles of the word of God. I want you to just spend some time in Malachi, third chapter. The 11th verse. And ask yourself, can he do this for me? <laughs> That's the question. Can he do this for me? Will he do this for me? Can I expect this? Now, when you ask yourself that question, then I want you to go back to the word. Did I love him with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul? Did I serve him only? Did I follow his commandments? Did I submit myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him? Was I transformed by the renewing of his word? Did I abide in him and he abide in me? Mm -hmm. And guess what? Hallelujah. If there's anything I missed that you required of me, mm -hmm. if I didn't do it, yes. forgive me mm -hmm. so that I may be on the side of righteousness mm -hmm. Come on, Holy Spirit, warn me, reveal me yes. unto me those shortcomings in my life. Amen. Because I want to experience the fullness of God. Yes. 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 I want all that you have for me. Yes. I want it all. Thank and when I need you to, yes. I want you to rebuke the devourer. <laughs> I want Hallelujah. you to rebuke the devourer for my sake. Hallelujah. Because we're not we're no match for Satan. Hallelujah. We are no match for him. There were some situations, and we just read it in Zechariah third chapter, second verse, that the Lord got to say, Satan, I rebuke you. I want him to stand up for me. I want him to say, Touch not my anointed. Cause my prophet no harm. Hallelujah. I want him to say it for me. Mm -hmm. I believe he will. I know he will. I know he has yes. done it in many of times. Oh God. Yes. And as long as I'm on this earth, he's mm -hmm. going to keep doing it for me. As Hallelujah. long as I find myself compliant yes. with the word of God. We're going to stop right there. And if the Lord does not shift us because it is 8 o'clock and we do have Bible study from 7 to 8. 
if he does not shift me, we're going to come back with part two next week with more applying the principles of the word of God. Please keep in mind that we will have virtual Bible study only next week, as well as I believe the first three Wednesdays in October. So we will be virtual for Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, listen, get into that word, get into that word, get into that word. Malachi 3 and 11. Ask yourself, will he do this for me? Let us have prayer. Father, I thank you and I magnify your name for this, your people. I thank you for your word. I thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I thank you for counsel. I thank you, Father God, that we have heard your voice. We have heard your word and we are not hardening our hearts. We are accepting your word. We are receiving it, Father God. And I pray, Lord God, that this word, it fell on good ground. The enemy cannot snatch it. Satan, the Lord, Lord, rebuke you from trying to snatch this word. We are applying this word to our lives so that we can see the fulfillment of your word, Father God, in our lives, not just in this place, but upon the earth. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that comes in contact with this word, that this is your season to come in compliance with what God has spoken unto you for the release of what God has said that he is going to do. He is just waiting on us to line up with his word. I thank you for supplying their needs, Father God, according to your riches and glory. Seek ye first the kingdom, and those things shall be added unto you. I thank you for an abundance of overflow. I ask these things of the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay. I'm off the air.